This is the spot where the wormhole to Sadusiros used to be. We're in here for real. It's time to start scanning some exits. Oh boy. <laughs> what on earth have we gotten ourselves into? Okay, so I've made a couple of safe spots in system. We're gonna scan from a safe spot always. And we are also going to always make sure that we are aligned to somewhere else with our micro warp drive on because combat scanner probes are a constant reality in Thera. This safe spot we have made deep in space away from everything. The nearest celestial is 58 AU away, which means we're pretty safe from randomly showing up on someone's D scan. Also, we've made it off axis, so it's not directly in warp between any two places. We made this by first making a safe spot that was on axis between two points, warping to it, and then warping from it to a third point and dropping a safe spot that is not on anyone's natural path going to anywhere. So we should be pretty safe from someone randomly descanning us, which also makes us safer from combat scanner probes. The max range of a combat scanner probe is 64 AU, so there's a good chance that people scanning in the middle of the system wouldn't even know we were here. Nonetheless, we are going to take all of our precautions. We have potentially a lot of scanning to do. Dozens of signatures spawn in Thera every day, and most of them are wormholes. We could stay very busy trying to scan all of these down, but fortunately, there is an out-of-game tool we can use. The friendly people at Eve Scout scan all of the wormholes in Thera on a regular basis and post where they go and what signature they are on their website. Let's take a look at Eve Scout right here. So we can see there are currently 19 known wormholes in Thera. And we can look at this list, pick where we'd like to go, and scan down that signature specifically. You, in fact, can actually get a link to an in-game bookmark list from Eve Scout, which will just have bookmarks to all of these wormholes show up in your locations window. But I'm not going to do that because I've sort of arbitrarily decided that that would qualify as in-game assistance from other players, whereas using the out-of-game tool is very similar to using something like Eve Gatecheck, and I feel pretty comfortable with that. So we are still going to have to do some scanning here, but the Eve Scout website is going to reduce our scanning burden by a lot. Now remember I said the places we're most likely to find the gas that we need are Metropolis, Pythabolus, Wicked Creek, and Molden Heath. And check it out, there is a wormhole to Kenora in Metropolis open right now. Looks like it's got about another 10 hours on it. Kenora is a low sec system right on the edge of Great Wildlands. It is very quiet. I know that area of space well. We need to scan down signature FMJ. Let's launch some probes. This is Bill. Bill wants to build a Cinnaball and join the Angel Cartel cause in Zarzak, but he's not making it easy on himself. FMJ217, unstable wormhole, and we already know, thanks to Eve Scout, that this goes to Kenora. Let's see what Kenora has to offer us. We're bookmarking our art hole so we don't have to scan it down again. And in fact, we can look at the Eve Scout website once more and see that the in signature from Kenora to Thera is AKU, so we can just straight up ignore that right off of our list and save ourselves the time of scanning down that one signature. But there are still seven more here, which could be of interest to us, and I notice immediately on D-Scan, two Athenors, which means, potentially, Moongu. Let's go find out. No asteroids at this Athenor. It's not even tractoring in a moon chunk. Rare that you see that. Let's check out the other one. This one is in the process of tractoring in a moon chunk, still 400 kilometers away. Our wormhole will be long gone by the time this guy gets into uh, asteroid field blast range. So we're not even going to be adding these Thera Connection Astro Houses to our spreadsheet. 
We're just going to peek at them and see if they've got a field all ready to go. But we will scan the system. We're here looking for gas. We're not interested in combat sites, especially considering there'll be angel combat sites because we're in Metropolis. Another wormhole. We're not going to want to pop through there lest we get locked out of Therab accident. Two more wormholes. I will say I'm enjoying this extra scan strength. And it also is much faster scanning when you know that you're leaving system immediately and you can just ignore everything as soon as it's of the type that you don't want. Gas sight. Bam. Too easy. I shouldn't get too excited, though. This could well be a chemical lab. But I have a feeling things have been turning up Bill Dinga. Eagle Nebula. Azure Cloud. Now we have to see if this is the Mycocerosin we already have or the Cytocerosin that we so badly need. Oh, it's the Mycocerosin again. Would have been too much to ask. Oh, well, there's still one more signature to scan. Okay, nothing of interest to us here in Kenora, but there is one more low-sex system, Odebayan, in this little pocket in between high-sec and null-sec. So we'll scan down Odebayan as well before we head back to Thera. Ghost Nebula. That's the same one we got before, right? That's also Azure Mycocerosin. I'm pretty sure this is the same one that we already harvested a couple episodes ago. Azure Mycocerosin. I know the Cytocerosin is a lot rarer than the Myco, though it's not that surprising that we found three Azure Mycocerosin clouds now, including the first one that we harvested and not found any Cyto yet. But look how many signatures there are, and look how few people there have been in local out here. This is one of the huge advantages of Thera, is that it connects randomly to systems all across New Eden, and there are a lot of empty sections of New Eden, but those empty sections are usually empty because they're inconvenient to get to from the places where people want to be. Which means that if we want to fly over and check out a completely deserted corner of Metropolis on our own, we'd have to fly the... how many jumps is this from Minar? 24 jumps! Over here. Whereas from Thera, pop! One wormhole out, do our scanning, Boop, one wormhole back. And then on to some other deserted corner of the galaxy. With all different rats, all different kinds of sights. This was a clever play, if I do say so myself. Another gas sight. What is going on here? You know this corner of Metropolis must be dead, because there's no way in a highly trafficked system that four gas sites... Vermilion Cloud! We need vermilion gas. We need both types. We don't have either of them. Now, if this is the mycocerosin, that means we have to do a lot of uh, gas huffing. Yep, it's vermilion mycocerosin. There are three clouds. We'll bookmark one of the clouds directly, and then we will promptly head back to Thera, throw the gas cloud scoops back on Hermes the Venture, and get our butts out here. Whew! Thera is already paying dividends. What a victory. I mean, I should not say things like, what a victory, before we've even started harvesting the gas. <laughs> Who knows what will happen once we're in there. You'll notice we've got a core probe launcher on Hermes now. That's not just for style. This is essential equipment if we're jumping out of Thera, if the wormhole somehow expires behind us, then we can use the EVE Scout website to figure out where our nearest in-hole to Thera is. But in order to find it, since we're not using the in-game bookmarks, we'll need to have probes. So even though the venture is unbonused for probing and will be much worse at the task than our probe is, we're going to want to be carrying scanner probes on every ship that we take out of Thera for as long as we're living here. Vermilion Mycocerosin, here we come. We need 320. And it is incoming. I saw Shadow Clown moving around in a capsule before, and I haven't seen him in any other ship since. I'm feeling pretty hopeful that he's not out hunting and will not pose any threat to us. 
As I recall, this is a 40 minute gas up here we have ahead of us. And of course, the system's starting to get busy just as we near the end of our Vermilion Megasaurosin expedition. One more minute before we can warp out of here. I don't see any probes, neither core nor combat. We're going to try and wait it out. We can see the Kenora Gate on D-Scan. So as soon as this last cycle 25 seconds of our gas huffers finishes, we will enter warp directly to the Kenora Gate. And we're out of here. 320 Vermilion Microsorosin. As long as we can get it safely back to our station in Thera. Although that is then going to be a somewhat riskier extraction than what we've been doing usually. We're still going to put up the check mark. But it is certainly not outside the realm of possibility that we could stash this Mycoserosin and Thera and then <laughs> get caught and blown up trying to extract it out to Minar. Kenora is empty, so at least we know we can warp safely to the wormhole. Although we can't know what's on the other side until we poke our head through. There's no Eve gate check for wormholes. Nobody on grid, nobody on D-scan. Let's dock up. Three hundred and twenty vermilion microsorosin in the bank. Our first outing from Thera was an unmitigated victory. This is the best idea Bill's ever had. Now, where do we want to go next? We've undocked, and there's a saber on grid, and he's got a bubble right on the undock. I am stopping the ship. We have a one-minute undock timer which keeps us safe from being targeted. This is why we care about kickout stations. We can't warp off because of the bubble, but we can just redock because we're still within the docking range. Some station models, by the time our ship stopped, we would have been more than zero kilometers from the docking range, which means we would have had to fly back. And as soon as we start flying back, those ships can target us. And there was the Sabre, but there was also a Tornado who could have easily one-shot us. So, doing anything that allowed us to be targeting there was going to be instant death. When you've got the undock invulnerability timer, giving your ship the stop command is the only thing, other than like descanning, that doesn't break that timer. So if you see hostiles on ground when you're undocking, stop your ship immediately. You should have that to a hotkey and know what the hotkey is. <laughs> and then, if your ship comes to a stop and you're still within docking range, you can just redock. If you're outside of docking range, you'll still have your invulnerability timer, but you'll have to come up with another plan pretty quickly. Like I said, I've spent a lot of time in Thera before on my main, and these station undocks do not get perma-bubbled. So we'll just wait a few minutes for these guys to move on. But this is one of the dangers of living in Thera, similar to the dangers of living in, you know, a Nullsec system, is that People can use things like interdictors to severely restrict your mobility in all kinds of ways. It can be really frustrating if you're planning to log in and immediately play, and it sort of ruins your evening to just be like, okay, we're going to wait 20 minutes and then try again. That said, we do have jump clones. We could jump back to, say, Minar or Albrez and just do something over there and write off there for the next you know, day or two. It has to be for a while because once you jump clone, you get a 24 hour timer before you can jump back. Now, I still want to spend more time right now engaging with 
their uh, gameplay. So I'm not going to jump clone out of here. I'm just going to minimize the client and wait for 20 minutes. But if you do get hell camped into a station in Nelsec or in Thera, then jump cloning out or, you know, self-destructing and pot expressing out is always an option. Okay, so it's been about half an hour since we undocked into that uh, Saber bubble, and we're going to see if the outside of the station looks any clearer. We can always stop the ship and redock. We know that works. There are still there's still one guy here in a Kestrel and some wrecks and some capsules. None of those things can stop us from warping to our undock. And now we'll warp off to our deep safe and get on with our scanning. I've also made a descan spot close to our home station that is off grid so that when I come to return to the station, I don't just warp in blind from 100 AU away and potentially get caught in a saber bubble. If I warp to my descan spot, that's totally safe, and then descan will tell me if there's anything that's put up bubbles around the station so I can know whether or not I can safely warp to my dock bookmark. So while we scan, we are going to align to our descan safe spot with the micro warp drive on. So check descan periodically. And now, let's scan down a wormhole to Immensi. ACI is the signature we're looking for. Okay, we've got the wormhole bookmarked, and similarly to how we made that descan safe spot by the station, I've also made a descan safe spot sort of close to the sun. Uh, and we're going to warp there for the exact same reason, so that we can be within descan range of this wormhole and make sure there isn't a bubble and a defense fleet sitting on it before we just blindly warp to it. Okay, we are within 15 AU of the wormhole, and there is nothing on descan. We are safe to warp in. We'll double check that the wormhole is secure in terms of both stability and lifetime. We're going to approach it while we update our bookmark to be on the hole itself. And through we go. So this system in Immensi is in deep sovereign Nelsec in a corner of the map that seems to see almost zero traffic. This is angel controlled space, so obviously we're not gonna be shooting any NPCs here, but there might be some good data or relic sites or randomness for us. More significantly though, right next door is Ketch. And that is Sancha space. And Sancha space not only offers very good exploration, it also provides a very good opportunity for us to bring out one of our catalysts and do some serious ISK grinding, not only ISK, but also modules. If we can kill a few dozen battleships and bring in some large size modules to Thera, that's going to really jumpstart our manufacturing to a substantial degree. And actually building a Thorax in Thera might quickly be within reach for us. Now these null sec exploration sites will be harder on average than the ones we've been running in low sec. So we might fail a couple of cans. Well, that's acceptable. At this point in these data sites, we're mostly looking for data cores, honestly. Some T2 invention is potentially on the table for us, but those data cores that we had previously been considering to be garbage are actually a bottleneck for inventing the blueprints we might want to build. And there are a lot of different varieties of them, and we're going to need not exactly the <laughs> full panoply, but uh, the closer to it, the better. We also, of course, still want to keep collecting the filaments because Abyss because running abyssal sites is still potentially on the menu. None of the things that we find in a data site are going to directly help drive our quest for a Cinnaball right now, but they can open up a lot of different options for us. And so when we find one like this, it's worth the like five minutes it takes to run the site, especially when we're alone in system once again. So there is absolutely zero danger in this site. Nothing can go wrong for us more severely than losing a can. We don't want to venture too far from our Thera wormhole, but we can go a few jumps, and our home station is set back to Thera, so if we get caught in a bubble and killed, then we're just going to go back home. Although we will be very sad if that happens about having lost our sister's core scanner probes. We'll do a Sancha relic site for the salvage. The only salvage that we have in Thera currently is the little bit that we brought to build those rigs for our venture and probe. If this becomes our long-term home, of course, we're going to need to build up a good stock of salvage here as well. 
Although eventually a wormhole will open up which will allow us to easily retrieve anything from Albras that we want. But we can't know in advance <laughs> when that will be. 36 armor plates. Nice. The Sancha relic sites are generally seen as the most valuable for explorers because armor plates are the most difficult salvage to come by and armor rigs see a lot of use. Sancha relic sites are actually the only relic sites I'm pretty sure that can drop armor plates at all. And because the market drives up demand for those plates, the Sancha relic sites tend to, if you're selling your loot for risk, give you far better rewards than any other faction. Uh, now, the Tech 1 armor plates are in not nearly as much demand as the Tech 2 ones. If we get a can that drops Tech 2 armor plates, you'll probably see that the estimated ISK value of the can is far higher than anything we've ever seen in an exploration site before. Although I will say that these high-level cans <laughs> in the Nullsec Relic sites are no joke with the skills and modules we have. We just blew up that can. There we go, five intact armor plates. This, if we were selling the loot, would be what made salvaging in Sancha space worthwhile. It might make it worthwhile for us too. We might want to build tech two rigs, but we're gonna to have to invent the blueprints first. So if we go KDF, then we can explore it. And then there's a system six tack K that we can jump up to and explore. And that closes the loop back around and we can return to Thera. It's a little shocking that I already have a safe spot here. When was I in KDF tack before? When did I make this safe spot bookmark? November 28th. I guess when I first got, when I first got my scan pro blueprint <laughs> and was scanning around Minar, I must have popped my head through a wormhole that brought me out to KDF tack and I made a safe spot. And the longer you play, the more you will find yourself returning to systems and being like, oh, Look at these convenient bookmarks I have. Look at this convenient bookmark I have. Sancha Fortress. I am pretty sure that is going to be well outside of the capability of anything that we have available to us. Now, I did want to come out here in a catalyst after we finish our scanning loop and see if I couldn't find a way to earn some isk by killing rats out here. Although I noticed that this is one of the areas of Nullsec where they removed all of the asteroid belts. Now we can still belt rat in the ore and ice anomalies, but it means we're probably not gonna find any systems out here with the buffet of like 27 belts that we've been spoiled with in Placid and Syndicate. Oh look, this system, we also made a safe spot in, and it's got a bunch of signatures in it. And it has a weak metaliminal electrical storm Oh, which is giving us a bonus to our scan strength and our analyzer coherence. We might see where the storm's uh, boundaries are and do a little more exploration. With the skills and modules we have, a bonus to probe strength and a bonus to analyzer coherence is something that we can't really turn down. Oh, the Tech 2 rig blueprints do still drop in relic sites. They're just far rarer than I remember them being. I don't think we're going to be building a capital semiconductor memory cell blueprint, though. If we did have an avatar, maybe this would be useful to us, but I don't think we're going to get there in this series. But still, that means that we may be able to get to T2 rigs without having to invent them ourselves, which is convenient because we have not been able to find the data cores that we want. I haven't mentioned specifically, but I have been looking at what Tech 2 rigs we would most like to build with the ships that we fly and with the Tech 2 salvage we have available to us. And I would really love to build some Tech 2 uh, aeronautics rigs, things that provide things like agility and speed and warp speed. But most of those rigs require molecular engineering data cores in order to build. There's another data core they also need, I forget which one, but I noticed that we have it. We have that one. The molecular engineering data cores we have never seen yet. So if we find a molecular engineering data core in one of these sites, then we will get to 
inventing some Tech 2 rigs immediately. Or, or maybe, apparently, we'll just find the Tech 2 rig BPC we need and not have to bother with inventing it at all. I think we've got enough stuff in our hold now to call this a successful little exploration outing, even though none of the things we got are directly helping us build a Cinnaball. But man, if we were just a... Okay, wait a second. Let me stop talking. There's a Vedmac. Not actually a danger to me. But in those situations, I always worry that he's got friends on the other side of the gate. He does not seem to. So we can safely just head back to 6 tac k We've got a pretty good head start on rigs for our hangar in Thera. And though, as always, it doesn't especially matter to us, look at the estimated price line on what we got here for about four Santa Nelsec relic sites. 192 million isk. And remember, we're in a Tech 1 exploration frigate with Tech 1 modules and our skills trained to like three or four. Basing on a Thera and doing deep Nelsec exploration in a T1 frigate is a pretty seriously viable income stream if you're, you know, a newer player looking for something to do. Now we're going to check and see if this wormhole still has life on it. It does. Its time and mass still have significant buffers. So what we're going to do is we're going to warp back to our home station at Paleo Cybernetics. We're going to drop off all this loot. We're going to come back on our catalyst and see if we can't kill some Sancha battleships. Collect some ISK and collect some valuable mineral packed modules. We still need to earn about 300 million ISK to buy all of our reactions and blueprint formulas. And this was part of the move into Thera plan, was that these wormholes to Nelsec would let us do very efficient one jump ratting outings. Oh, there's no troublemakers on the undock. That is nice. Time to take Kareen, the catalyst, out to catch and kill some Sanchez battleships, hopefully. I'm not entirely sure how many we're going to be able to find, given that there's no traditional asteroid builds out there, but we're going to give it a shot. Wormhole still has plenty of time and mass on it. Whoa, bunch of people in Immensity now. This is interesting. Nobody's in D-scan range of the wormhole. But what, what the heck are all these people doing in local? What is going on here? There's no money in the encounter surveillance system bank. Which is relevant because as people are killing rats in Sov Null systems, some portion of the bounty goes into the ESS bank, where it can be stolen. We're not going to be stealing it, but we know that these people are not here ratting. This is definitely a PvP operation. If they're camping that gate, then obviously this whole operation is a bust. If they're doing anything other than camping that gate, then I probably don't have to worry about them. They're not going to divert that whole fleet of 16 ships to come chase a catalyst. As long as I don't accidentally land on them, I should be fine, and they are not within D-scan range of this gate. So let's just go through. Oh, and they're wishing me luck and, luck and local. That's so nice. First, we're going to check out the desolate asteroid belt. I'm pretty sure that rats still spawn there. I think that's why they exist. These beacons were put in after the asteroid belts were removed. They have no mineable asteroids at them, but it still gives you a spot for belt ratting. Now, the downside of a catalyst as a ratting ship outside of Serpentis or Garista's space is that we're locked in our damage types. We do kinetic and thermal damage, and we can't choose to do anything else. Against Serpentis, and to a lesser degree against Garista's, that means we're still shooting them in their weak resists. But with Sanchez, you really want to be shooting EM. The thermal that we do most of our damage in is still not bad, and kinetic is our secondary damage type. This is okay. But if we could switch to EM damage somehow, as Amar ships naturally do, and as, you know, missile ships or projectile cannons would let us make that switch, then we take this guy down a lot faster. Nonetheless, this isn't actually going to present a problem for us. Just going to be a little bit slower than it would otherwise be. <laughs> we got a backup medium C5L for our probe. Now we'll check out the Ornomalies. 
Although one of these anomalies, as I recall, had like a hundred drones in it. Yep, we don't want any part of this. I don't think. The sentry guns we could probably tank. It's once the light missiles start hitting us that I'm concerned. So I wouldn't mind taking out those uh, drone battleships. It's not worth the hassle. And I'm actually not sure if the NPCs spawn at these anomalies until you start mining the ore. So it might in practice end up being just the desolate asteroid belts that have rats we can reasonably kill in them. Which means one spawn group of rats per system. This is slightly disappointing. That's right, there's gate spawns as well. Oh, that 500mn micro warp drive and that large laser are actually going to reprocess so well. According to Dotlan, the nearest system in catch with actual belts in it is about 10 jumps away. Oh, there we go. Double battleship spawn. Warping to this deserted Galantic outpost, see if rats spawn there. This is convenient. This looks good. I don't like the look of that cloud, though. But I do want to kill that battleship and battlecruiser. Well, there's Veldspar here. I can't 100% tell, though, if that cloud is just cosmetic or if it would actually kill me. I'm assuming by the fact that that battlecruiser is deep in that cloud and taking no damage, that doesn't actually do damage. Oh, they don't drop the loot. Oh! I popped in to see if there'd been a new spawn. At one of these belts we already cleared. And there's a faction battlecruiser. True Santa's devil. This is worth killing. I'm glad I peeked in. I was like, oh, it's been about half an hour since we cleared this belt. That was a good instinct. This faction battlecruiser has a one and a half million S bounty, which makes it worthwhile all by itself. And who knows what it might drop for us. What do you have, True Santa's Devil? True Santa Multi-Spectrum Energized Membrane. That's real nice. That would go lovely on the thorax once we build it. This was worthwhile. The EM Hardener and the uh, Kinetic Coating. Less exciting, but I will not turn my nose up at a True Santa Multi-Spec. I have to make a little bit of room in the hold, but these uh, hull reps are big and reprocess into very little. At all sizes, they reprocess into less than a thousand titanium. So jettisoning those gives us plenty of room in our hold. True Sancha Multispectrum Energized Membrane. True Sancha EM Armor Hardener. True Sancha Kinetic Coating. True Sancha Gold Tag. Sancha's Radio M. And a large gun and a medium spark bomb to boot. That was a productive, desolate asteroid belt. Let's go back home. The uh, isk per hour that we earned in this hour out here ratting left a little bit to be desired, but this little outing was completely saved by that true Santa multi-spectrum energized membrane. Um... Where's my wormhole?